So, um, this is background on neuroplasticity, sensitivity of our brains to environmental input. A number of people have decided to see if they could harness this neuroplasticity for therapeutic and now educational purposes. I started this about 15 years ago, trying to develop brain training programs for people with serious psychiatric illnesses because those people have cognitive problems that do not get better from the medications we have and that are rate limiting in terms of quality of life and ability to live in the community. So I've been developing those for about 15 years. It turns out that they work. Uh, this is just an uh, early brain imaging study I did. This is a verbal uh, memory task. And while we, we're collecting brain activation through functional magnetic resonance imaging while people are remembering lists of words, uh, this part of the brain is typically activated in healthy people, left inferior frontal cortex, and people with this disorder, schizophrenia, it, is fail it just doesn't get activated. This was a study in a patient who had actually been in a hospital for 20 years and then had come out. He was an older gentleman, had serious cognitive deficits. We trained him in, in working memory. And now we saw, after 16 weeks of training, actual normalization of activation in those areas. I realized about uh, four or five years ago that although this worked, it didn't work as well as we would hope it would work. So I devoted my lab towards developing what I call next generation brain training programs with new functionalities. And then about three years ago, I said, wow, why not apply this to education? Here we're working with older people whose brains are less plastic, that have an illness, but we know this is how the brain develops. It develops because of stimulation. Why not be very explicit about that and see what we can do to enhance development of targeted brain systems that are essential for learning. So, I mean, this is one of those in the shower, after, after the shower moments, you know, you get this thought, and then I said to myself, well, what? but that's a little scary, I thought. That seems sort of sci-fi, you know, and a little bit like that movie Twins, uh, you know, where all, Arnold Schwarzenegger had all this special training on this island so that his, cap his genetics could be amplified much more than Poor Danny DeVito's. Um. <laughs> um, but then I realized that's what we do anyway in education, like it or not. We're shaping brains and minds. And as you know better than I, education has borrowed from other branches of science before. Uh, cognitive psychology. Um, now it's time to also borrow from neuroscience. And then I discovered I'm not the first one to think about a brain-based pedagogy. And, when I was in China giving a lecture at Beijing Normal University where they train their teachers. It's like a teacher's college. And they have a key national laboratory with uh, ERP recordings, fMRI recordings, genetics, and the Minister of Education is calling on China to have a brain-based pedagogy. I saw the slide for that. So it's, not, uh, it's a current idea. Yale decided to help create a company so that we could develop these ideas. Uh, it turns out that it's very useful to have a commercial structure if you want to actually bring something to the awareness of people. I can't, don't get grants very easily to say, I want to hire somebody to train a lot of teachers or to go out to uh, schools and tell people about our program. <laughs> but if you don't do that, you've got the problem, which the NIH has already realized in all branches of medicine, the average time from discovery to implementation in clinical practice, 17 years. So that's not good. So, we have a, uh, uh, a commercial structure to help us deal with that, distribute it, and further develop it.